so uh, this is my case study one in which a 60 year 68 year old gentleman known to have type 2 diabetes mellitus for past 10 years on twice daily premixed insulin presented with concerns of recent onset fasting hyperglycemia he has an hba1c of 5.6% on further history he often misses his bedtime snack he was put on a continuous glucose monitors for diabetes device which showed the following pattern so now that the pattern is visible for you any volunteer what is this graph all about uh, anybody would like to answer this so maybe this question can the graph is showing here according to the case one can you see this next slide uh we are still seeing the graph slide ma'am and now yeah so we have four options here so let me help you with the options is it a dawn phenomenon is it a somogy phenomenon is it reactive hyperglycemia or is it reactive hypoglycemia so you all are welcome to answer whether right or wrong it's absolutely fine you can unmute to answer uh no ma'am they can't unmute it uh i'll okay. just they can share in the chat yes they are sharing in the chat okay i'm seeing uh, the you, chat okay can you all share it in the chat box so one answer came as hypoglycemia yes reactive hypoglycemia anybody okay. else would like to answer because you have four options so if you think if something you think is right we can also go for it and just see how it goes for us okay we have answers here ma'am most uh, people are answering, answering b that is reactive hypoglycemia they are saying right. so uh, ma'am what is the right answer so the right answer is somogy phenomenon okay so let me explain my answer uh, to you before we get to know why somogy phenomenon is the right answer why don't we ask somebody from the audience itself why we have gone for reactive hypoglycemia why do you can you please it? explain your answer in the chat yeah, if anybody would like to know uh, get to tell us that why are we going forward with reactive hypoglycemia Ma'am, can you just you define reactive hypoglycemia in the chat? Ma'am, why do you think that they have gone forward with reactive hypoglycemia? Are there any links between the uh, somogy phenomena and reactive hypoglycemia? So that's I'm going to explain. Uh, let their answer come out. I just hold for few seconds and then I'll try to explain them. Okay, that. So somogy phenomena uh, and reactive hypoglycemia. So the uh, we have Dr. Mohammed. Panindra and Chetni Indra, telling us it's reactive hypoglycemia. Uh, doctor, would you like to share your uh, answer for why we have gone forward with reactive hypoglycemia? Okay. So, ma'am, uh, you only explain, and uh, we are not getting like everybody, ma'am. We have all the answers, which is saying hypoglycemia. so can you tell why we got confused here and uh, why somogy is okay. the right answer so i need to explain this with the help of graph can you all see this is the graph yeah. visible yes yes doctor. okay fine so now in this patient as you can see in the graph between 2 to 4 am his blood glucose level dropped to like almost 50 to 60 mg per deciliter okay then gradually you can see after 6 am and after 8 like between 8 to 10 am it has two high peaks of as he is giving the history of hyperglycemia like fasting hyperglycemia in the morning this can be clearly seen from the graph now before understanding diabetes uh, let me tell you what happen in our normal subjects 
so when we sleep at night our body doesn't require energy in the form of glucose so our body doesn't tell liver to produce glucose but what happens when we are about to wake up and uh, once we are into our routine our body asks liver to secrete glucose because by that time uh, our body is working so we require energy to carry out our daily activities why this is happening only in the morning is that in the morning hours before our body gets prepared for any activities counter regulatory hormones so uh, can you tell me what are the four counter regulatory hormones so this is a bit easy question uh, anybody would like to tell us about counter regulatory hormones okay so we have one okay uh glucagon glucagon okay glucagon is the right answer yes what about the other three counter regulatory hormones wow there is one doctor who told us glucagon shadam cortisol growth hormone and epinephrine good thing all the four, all all of them right so this is the right answer I have one more. Uh, so I think it's adrenaline glycagon. Okay. Cortisol yeah. and growth hormone. So the four counter regulatory hormones that is the glucagon, cortisol, growth hormone, and the epinephrine. So in the morning hours, this counter regulatory hormones get secreted normally in our body, so that every day we wake up, we are not in a state of hypoglycemia. This our body takes care of. Okay. But what is happening in diabetic patients is that. in the early morning even the counter regulatory hormones are getting secreted but what is happening is that insulin is already deficient in their body if i take example of this 68 year old gentleman what has happened with him is that he is a chronic diabetic he is on premixed insulin but he typically gives the history of missing his bedtime snacks so this missing of bedtime snacks so he is not getting enough carbs before going to bed this is a typical precipitating factor for somogi phenomenon so what will happen in the midnight hours counter regulatory hormones so the sugar levels are taken care of but they are secreted in such an excess that he will have fasting hyperglycemia so in somogi phenomenon fasting hyperglycemia is also called as rebound hyperglycemia why is that because he this hyperglycemia is already preceded by an episode of hypoglycemia in the midnight so this is in better terminology it is called as the rebound hyperglycemia which happened in this case so this is my explanation to the somogi phenomenon can you hear me no doubts can uh, do anybody have any kind of doubts till now do they want to ask something okay okay ma'am please explain again mix the connection okay ma'am okay, can you explain it again about somogi phenomenon okay fine so now i will just talk about this case and try to explain so now he is a chronic diabetes type 2 diabetes patient and what he gave history is he missed his bedtime snacks so he didn't have enough carbs before going to bed now when he was asleep uh, typically between 2 to 4 am you can see that his blood glucose levels drop now this is a precipitating factor of not uh, of missing a bedtime snacks for this somogi phenomenon so in somogi phenomenon between 2 to 4 am the patient typically lines up into hypoglycemia like you can see from the graph 
his blood glucose has dropped to almost 50 to 60 mg per deciliter then what happened is now the body will uh, as uh, morning is approached the body will start to secrete counter regulatory uh, as a normal mechanism so this counter regulatory hormones will now shoot his blood glucose levels to high in the early morning so he came with the another chief complaint of fasting hyperglycemia so in this case we called is call it as rebound hyperglycemia this is because this hyperglycemia in the morning was preceded by hypoglycemia in the midnight another reason for fasting hyperglycemia because why in normal subjects we don't have fasting hyperglycemia we have sufficient normal levels of glucose but this main reason of fasting hyperglycemia typically in diabetic patients is enough insulin is not there so as it is the blood glucose levels are rising plus counter regulatory hormones are secreting so uh, it is uh, suppose that the blood glucose levels are peak in the morning so this is also called as the Somogi phenomenon and characteristic feature is the rebound hyperglycemia and precipitating factor is missing the bedtime snack. So uh, I can see chat box me, e, ma'am, why is HbA1c level is not increased? So, doctor, you can answer the questions if you want in between or else I'll ask in the end. So, uh, yes. HbA1c level is not increased, it is in the normal range. So main reason behind that is not necessarily the patient will have poor glycemic control. Now that the patient is having twice daily premixed insulin, so he is already his uh, post meal blood glucose level and his blood glucose level in entire day is taken care of. It is all in the normal range. But if he would have taken care before bed, uh, three precipitating factors can be there. First is missing the bedtime snacks, not taking enough carbohydrate. This is one thing. Second thing is he might take excess insulin that too before bedtime, which would have taken post meal. Third factor can be poor glycemic control. I'm not saying it cannot be there, but what is happening is this patient is typically having this uh, outbreak of glucose levels in the midnight. So, so Mogi phenomenon does not necessarily predict it is a poor glycemic control. So it is quite natural that he will have a normal HbA1c level. I hope I'm clear in answering this. Can you see this next slide? Do we have any kind of uh, doubts? Uh, yeah, ma'am, we can go forward. Uh, okay, she replied as yes, ma'am. So I hope the doubt is clear. Yes, yes. Can you see the diagnosis for last slide? Uh, no, ma'am. We are still seeing the so graph. Every thing. time I have to, not an issue. I just take care of this. Yeah. So as the uh, maximum answer was B, reactive hypoglycemia. And I asked, uh, nobody answered like, what is reactive hypoglycemia? So reactive hyperglycemia or reactive hypoglycemia, this happens in response to the meals taken. That is why it is called as reactive. So it's body's reaction to meal ingestion. So what is happening is uh, this hyper and hypoglycemia are two sides of the same uh, coin. So when we uh, ingest food within two to four hours, either liver is continuously keeping on producing glucose so patient will have reactive hyperglycemia or liver fails to produce glucose food is all absorbed energy is utilized and patient will have hypoglycemia so definitely in this case uh, this is not typically happening after meal ingestion maybe lunch dinner breakfast or supper this is what is happening happening in the midnight typically between 2 to 4 a.m and then early morning after 6 a.m. is having fasting hyperglycemia. So that is why the option selected by most of you reactive hypoglycemia is incorrect. 